All right, so today we're at a friend's house. We're actually in Florida, and they've had this toilet that just kind of runs every once in a while because the flapper's not sealed. Do you hear that? That's the problem, okay? It keeps doing that. It's letting out the water, running up the water bill. And uh, so what I'm gonna do on YouTube today is show you how to replace all the insides of the toilet, okay? The flapper, the adjuster, the valve, everything's super easy. Even a caveman could do it, what, however you wanna say it. This particular product, you can find linked in the description. Just click on it, go over to Amazon, get this exact product. It's uh, universal with lots of adjustments, works with almost any toilet, okay? So here we go, we're gonna do it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get down underneath the toilet and turn off the water supply. You do this by turning the little knob clockwise into the off position, okay? <sighs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top of the toilet so we can get at the innards. Okay. All right, so now it's a good idea to put a towel down so that when you put the porcelain, it doesn't get dinged or scratched. All right, so the next step is we're gonna drain all the water out of this tank and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You ready? All right, so basically turn the handle as you normally would, but you're gonna hold it up so all the water drains out. Okay, you want to make sure you hold this up and as much water as you can get out of there, you get out of there. Okay? All right, so now what we need to do is just take like a towel and we're going to sop out what's left of that water in there because we don't want that water in the bottom because if you disconnect these bolts, that water is going to go everywhere and make a mess. So now you're just going to take an old towel like so and basically put it in here and sop up this water. All right, so I'm, I'm sopping this water out of here. Now don't worry or anything. It's basically clean water. It's in the tank. No poo-poo or anything's ever touched the water. So don't be afraid to get your hands down in here and just dry this out. All right, so now what we're gonna do first is we're gonna disconnect and remove the valve. Now this is where the water supply is directly connected to it. So we're gonna double check, make sure the water supply is turned off snugly. We don't want any new water coming in. We're gonna disconnect it and remove this part. Okay, so a lot of times you can actually undo these with your hand, uh, but if it's too tight, just grab a pair of channel locks or a pair of regular pliers, and you can undo the supply line like this. Disconnect it. Just kind of move it out of the way. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm down underneath the toilet with just a regular pair of pliers and I'm loosening this bolt. Now once you get it started, you can usually undo it with your hand, okay? So I'm just gonna take this bolt. The white tube from spinning with one hand and then I'm spinning the knob that's kind of stuck with the pliers. Okay. So I was having some trouble getting this off just because some of the threads were messed up. So here's an alternative with this kind that you can get it off. So I unscrewed the float, unscrewed the drain line, okay? And then I unscrewed this, okay? Now, if you take this piece out, you're still gonna have the plug down here. And what I did, I reach in with a pair of pliers and I grab a hold of that and hold it tight. And then I take the pliers and I reach down underneath and I unscrewed it that way. So that way, once that is done, I can lift out the plug. And as you can see, it's totally removed then. And we can just remove this from the toilet. Right, so when you take these out, a lot of times if they've been in there a long time, they're gonna be kind of gooey and black and the black, uh, band around that will get real soft and get all over everything. So have a trash bag standing by so that when you remove these parts, you can put them right in the trash bag. It can be a kind of a messy job. So anything you can do to limit the mess, we take out the drains of the matte plastic piece. Now we'll go to the next part. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these three bolts that hold the tank on the toilet. It's gonna take a couple of tools. We got a half inch wrench, and we got a flathead screwdriver, okay? So the half inch wrench is down here underneath. We're gonna put our wrench on it. And at first it's gonna be tight enough to where we can just turn it and it's not gonna turn the bolt. 
enough, then we can come in with our screwdriver and just back this out. Once you get it loose, it comes out rather easily. All right, so here you can see that all three screws and bolts are removed. Now we can actually remove the tank and remove this flapper piece that lets the water out. All right, so the tank is basically disconnected. It's only held on by friction. We need to get to the underside to remove the rubber gasket. So I got a towel ready to go here in the way, and I'm gonna pick up the tank and rotate it over gently and carefully so that I can get at the rubber gasket. All right, so the next step is just to remove this rubber gasket. We'll get a screwdriver behind there, loosen it up, pop it off, and let's throw it away. All right, so now we have to take off this big plastic nut here. Now, it's best to take like a big pair of channel locks and get it on there and you can just easily turn that right off. But what if you don't have channel locks? Well, then the you can take a flat-headed screwdriver and just a little hammer, not very much, uh, it doesn't take very much pressure. You just put it against this little plastic groove and you can just tap it off. So basically a lot of times those old gaskets get soft and they make a mess. So I like to go back in and clean up all the surfaces. We want to clean up all the surfaces so when the new gaskets go in, they fit nice and tight with no leakage. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bolt which holds the handle and we're going to remove the handle. Again, you can just grab it with a standard pair of pliers, break it loose, loosen it up. Once it's loose, it's very easy to remove. Take now out. we're going to put the new parts in, in the, re in the reverse order, okay? So we've opened the product here, we're going to start with the handle. Then we're going to go to the flapper, and then we're going to put the um, turn off. All right, so we're going to put the handle back on now. Okay, do that by removing the knob, sticking it through the hole, get it positioned, put the plastic nut back on. All right, and then you want to take this on. You don't want to over tighten this. Okay, put it as you know, put it snug, hand tight. And then maybe just a little bit of a snug up with, with the pliers, and you're Let's done. start by taking the rubber gasket off. Then we're going to back off the bolt. Okay, get that ready to be placed on the tank. And then we're going to take this little protective piece off the flapper. Upon placing the uh, flapper back in, you'll notice that if I were to put this straight up and down, it'll block the access hole to the screw. So I'm gonna to have to turn the flapping device to the side so that I have access to the screw hole in the back. We're gonna hold that with one hand and turn it over so that we can put the attaching bolt back on. Okay, we're going to tighten that down real good, and usually a good hand tight is all you need. You don't want to over tighten these because it's all plastic and you can actually break them, but if you wanted to, a pair of channel locks to tighten it up, you could. Just be careful not to over tighten. Now, I didn't have to have a pair of channel locks today, so I'm just going to take my flathead screwdriver and gently just tap that a few times just to snug it up. Once that's on, let's replace the new rubber seal. All right, so now that that's on, we're gonna just place the tank back on the toilet. Again, this is just friction fit, so we're gonna have to hold on to it. All right, so it just naturally kind of fits down in that hole. Now we're gonna put the Here bolts back on. we have the bolt that's going to attach the toilet back to the, or the tank back to the toilet. You gotta make sure you put this rubber gasket all the way on, all the way up. And then you're gonna stick this through the tank. You're gonna put on a washer, and then you're gonna put on the right, nut. So let's put the screws back. All 
Okay, most toilets have two bolts. This has three, so we're gonna have to reuse one of the bolts, but we wanna make sure that we take the old gasket off. We're just gonna take a screwdriver and take the old gasket off and replace it with a new one. We put the three bolts back in, and again, this is porcelain, so you wanna be very careful to not over tighten, but you'll see, if you can see closely there, you wanna tighten these just until they get nice and snug, and you can see that you've got a good pressure down around this rubber seal, because that's what's gonna keep the water from going back through. So you wanna make sure it's tight enough to push that seal nice and tight, but not so tight that you crack the bolt. Okay, so now we're gonna replace the float and this is the float that comes up and turns the valve off so the water will stop running. And what's really cool about these new ones is they're fully adjustable. You can adjust the height of the float. You can move this and adjust the height of the valve. So we're getting ready to put this back in. What we'll do is we're gonna stick it down through the hole and we're gonna position it so that this nozzle is pointing towards the drain valve, okay? And then we're gonna slide once we put it through, we're gonna slide this, the rubber piece first, and then we're gonna put the plastic piece on, which secures it to the tank. Okay, so we're about to put the supply line back on, and you can see here that this is a solid supply line. And it looks like it's gonna fit just fine, but if yours is solid like this and it doesn't fit, you'll have to go back to like Home Depot or a hardware store and get a flex line and replace this part too. And you do that just by unhooking this, turning off the water outside the main shutoff, undoing this and then reattaching the new supply line to here. Obviously we're reattaching the supply line to the tank now. We finger snu snug it and we can just come in you know, with some pliers and just give it a final, final snug up. This is the part that refills the tank. This is gonna clip down in here, and then this line's gonna go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these together first before placing them. Okay. I'm pushing this on, and then once it's on, I'm gonna move the blue clip down, squeeze this, move it down so that it doesn't come off. And then this is the part that will go you know, down into the tank. So we want to basically position this so that the tube points down in there. I'm adjusting the fit here, and this tube's a little longer than it needs to be or should be. See that? This is gonna plug into here, but as you can see, that's gonna loop way up too high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut about an inch of that off. Okay. All right, I'm pushing that onto there. Then I'm gonna push the rubber clip up so that it doesn't come undone. And I'm gonna get this ready because we can actually adjust the flow of water to make it slower or faster by adjusting this knob, okay? But that'll, that'll change depending on every different toilet, okay? But that's what that's for, is to adjust the flow of water. So what we're gonna there. do here now is adjust the length of this chain. This chain with this clip is gonna be hooked onto the handle and that's gonna pull the flapper up, okay? But what we're gonna need to do is make that and change the clip so it's right nearby so that the chain isn't too, doesn't have too much slack because you don't want the flapper to go up and then excess chain to, to get fouled up in the mechanism. So here we are, we're adjusting the chain length for the flapper. And this is one of those things where we might have to see it with water to see how this interacts. But when you pull up on it, we, we don't want too much slack so that it gets messed up, but we don't want to have it be too tight. So it's kind of a little balancing act, but I think that's about enough right there. So let's take a look at adjusting the float here. As you can kind of see where the old water line was and where this float will probably turn off. So I started by removing or loosening the plastic up and now see I can actually move this up and down. So I'm gonna move it 
to where it's about at the top and um, push the plastic piece back down to kind of lock it into place. And then we're kind of eyeballing it right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and put water in it and then we're gonna see where it just automatically turns off and then we'll adjust it from there. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn the water on. It's a moment of truth. Let's see what happens. So here we have the tank completely adjusted out. I wanted to make note that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I've adjusted the water about a full inch lower than where it used to be, uh, just to save some water. I've also adjusted the flow line so that it's away from the float that turns it off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just demonstrate the flush. You'll see that the flapper stays up until the water goes down and then seals it back up. It'll then fill the tank back up. The float will come up and turn off the incoming water one inch below where it used to be saving over the life of the toilet a lot of water. So you can see here where I've adjusted the water in the bowl to stop. Again, if there's too much uh, water in the bowl or not enough, you would turn this wheel and restrict the amount of water that's going through this tube and that will restrict the amount of water going to the and bowl. Remember the, the water height is adjusted by the plastic piece I spoke of and then fine tune adjustments can be made here. Just take and, and twist this and that'll raise or lower the float by you know a quarter of an inch or half an inch so that you can get the water level exactly where you want it. Okay, so now I'm just gonna replace the top of the tank and we've been standing by for several minutes now since our last flush and it's not making that noise it's not letting out water so it looks like we've uh, got a good home improvement here this is all fixed up and I'm sure the homeowner will be really excited about the drop in water bill that they're gonna get over the next few months we have a successful home improvement the sound is not being made anymore the water is not being released slowly now on average, depending on where you are in the country, this just saved you, if you did it yourself, between $100 and maybe even $250 to do that yourself. Um, again, it's a very easy project. Click the link in the description or the links that you see down below, and uh, that'll take you right to Amazon, and uh, it'll take you right to the parts that you'll need in order to do, to do this uh, home improvement.